Paul Lazarsfeld was a, a you know great sociologist who uh, worked at Columbia for many years, which is where I used to teach. So I've got a special sort of uh, affiliation with him. The way he put the question was, who talks to whom about what and to what effect? So he wanted to know how information, you know, who was interacting with, how people were interacting with each other, what kind of things they were talking about, and how that impacted their behaviour. Uh, and he was interested in, in, in politics. He was interested in you know uh, voting behaviour. But very soon, this question uh, people realised was was relevant to to marketing and to uh, you know to all kinds of you know, social behaviour. So it's something that people in communications and, and sociology have been interested in ever since. And what's exciting now is that we have these sort of new capabilities through social media, web 2.0 uh, uh, sites, uh, email, uh, IM, you know, all these sort of communication technologies to be able to do the kind of science that Lazarsfeld could only have imagined 60 years ago. Historically, when people uh, looked at, um, at social me you know, media or diffusion, you know, or, 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 uh, people were trying to understand like, why products, certain products succeed, why certain companies succeed, um, we tend to look at the successful things. We look at, we study successful people, we study successful companies, we study hit singles, we study you know, the movies that do very well at the box office, and then we try to learn from that uh, you know, how to replicate success. And, what we're discovering is that if you just look at the successful things, you're really just sort of looking at the tip of the iceberg, that, that most of what's happening uh, is never sort of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, reaching above the, the threshold of, of public attention. And so, and many of the things that do not succeed have exactly the same attributes as the things that do succeed, right? So uh, it, once you start to see the whole picture, this whole distribution of success, um, it becomes much more unclear, uh, you know, why the things that succeed do so, and so you know you have to sort of adopt a totally different worldview of, of, of uh, how you know information spreads through a social network or, or how things become popular, and I think that's the kind of message that um, these experiments are, are revealing. I have to be honest with you, I don't actually spend a lot of time on Twitter myself. Um, um, I, I think I've, I think I've tweeted four times in the last 18 months. Um, so, um, so everyone who follows me is like very disappointed. Um, they think I'm going to have something to say. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't sort of necessarily participate um, uh, a whole lot in, in social media. I'm more interested in it as a way to, to understand, you know, how the world works. It's going to be experiments. You know that 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 uh, you know the the first sort of ten years of the web um, have generated an enormous amount of kind of uh, activity that we can observe. Um, and so we've been sort of drowning in, in data, um, you know, and it's just kind of amazing how, you know, I mean, you know, uh, 15 years ago when I started studying social networks, like the largest social networks were maybe that people could measure were a couple of hundred individuals. And now we have Facebook, which is a network of 500 million individuals. So, so we've sort of gone from the, the very small to the very large in, in the blink of an eye. Um, and that's been very exciting. But if you want to understand why things happen, if you want to understand cause and effect, you can't just sort of watch the world. You need to be able to run experiments. You need to be able to control things, switch things on and off, you know, subject some people to certain kinds of information and other people to different kinds of information. And that is a much, much more difficult thing to do than just sort of simply watch the natural world. And up until now, or up until very recently, you know, we've only really been able to do that in labs. You know, this is sort of the kind of thing that, you know, when you're a psych major, at college you get dragged into these experiments where there's like a few people sitting in a lab and now it's just starting to become possible to run these kinds of experiments at very very large scales and so that's the kind of thing that I think is going to be the big news in, at least in the science side of things for the next several years.